All right. So uh, you guys know that I've been talking about these uh, farmer strikes in India for a while now. Uh, to give you a recap, this started back in September. Uh, India was changing a lot of its farm laws and uh, they were making them more neoliberal and making them more, uh, you know, uh, friendly to the marketplace where they were like, oh, well, if we get private industry, uh, if you if the farmers deal directly with the vendors, they don't have to deal with any sort of minimums. They have the opportunity to make more money because free market, because private enterprises come in and they have a lot more money to give back to the farmers. So the farmers tried to have a um, a, a, a conversation uh, with with the BJP and the BJP essentially talked down to them. Uh, and and that's how the BJP uh, acts. They're the conservative party in India, but really they're the neo one of the neoliberal parties in India where they kind of talk down to anybody that isn't, um, you know, rich and white collar and a CEO of a corporation and so on and so forth. So they decided they're going to do a strike. They did a strike. It became a, a solidarity strike. 250 million people on Thanksgiving uh, marched. Uh, leading this general strike across India. And then, you know, the farmers kept going. They kept going. They marched on Republic Day. The the cops kind of funneled them through an area that wasn't very um, uh, visible, broke through the barriers to be more visible, because that's the point of strike. It's the point of civil disobedience. Cops attacked them. Uh, a couple people died. Uh, a couple people got injured, and that's all that corporate mainstream media wanted to cover, right? This, oh my God, it got violent. Look at all the violence. So then uh, the internet got cut because you had people like me and journalists on the ground in India that were essentially getting the story. That you know we're talking to strike leaders, and the strike leaders were saying, no, we're we're pushing for nonviolence. We're we're talking about nonviolence. And uh, so in the strike zone, the Internet got shut down. We talked about that about a week ago. And now uh, now what we're looking at is Twitter, in accordance with the BJP's Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology, um, which is which is basically like I feel like that's the that's the ministry in Harry Potter that's very overlooked. Right. It's 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 the guy in Harry Potter that's like, hey, I hooked up the internet, and everybody's like, we can do magic, bro. And he's like, all right, well, okay, well, I'm here if you need me. I set up a really cool, like, gaming center. If you guys, if you guys want to come check that out, it's pretty neat. Set up a server and stuff. That's so. Then he ended up leaving Hogwarts because he was like, I'm underappreciated and because he was so bitter and jaded he joined the neoliberal uh conservative government of india <laughs> uh but, but the ministry of electronics information and technology in, uh, worked with twitter uh and basically said hey you know there's people talking about this strike and they're using these hashtags and some of these hashtags are very harmful to us they're very they make us kind of look like dicks uh so block those accounts so they suspended and blocked a bunch of pro farmer strike accounts. Now Twitter, Twitter, you know, is claiming that well we're following the rules of the country, um, and uh, you know, we're not. It's not like we're. Um, it's not like we're. Uh, you know, censoring journalists and stuff. And that becomes a very conflicting statement, and I'll show you why, right? Because there, because there is there is conflicts within even just the reporting of this uh, from a couple of um, corporate news outlets. So here we go. So this is this is uh, news for a- a- Ajax. I think this is this is like a I can't I can't remember exactly where it is, but it's it's one of those affiliate sites. So uh, and this is this is somebody from the Associated Press, right? You can see that there. Uh, so I'll show you this. This is this is February 10th. It was updated just this morning. Just this morning, it was updated to say this. Uh, none of the suspended accounts belong to journalists, news organizations, activists, or politicians, as doing so would violate their fundamental rights to free expression under Indian law. That's what they said. Well, let's move to 
a, a, to a different AP article from five days ago, right? This is this is the same author here, uh, February 5th, 2021. Here's what it says. When Vinod K. Jost, the executive editor of The Caravan, India's leading investigative magazine, logged onto Twitter on Monday, he was shocked to find the magazine's account blocked. Jost was already dealing with a case of sedition and other charges uh, against him, the magazine owner and freelance journalist. At the heart of the allegations is the magazine's coverage of the ongoing farmers' protests that have gripped India for more than two months. So there you go. Two, uh, same author. Same press, AP, AP's covering this, uh, and AP covered this as well, right? This is from the Associated Press, here you can see that right there. Same author, uh, Krutika Pati, back up here, Krutika Pati, within the first paragraph, five days ago, they're talking about a journalist from the caravan who talked about the farmer strike, who was on the ground, censored, blocked on Twitter. And what do they say five days later? Oh, well, none of these people are, are, are journalists or news organizations or activists or politicians because that would violate free speech laws. Within five days, the narrative completely changes. They block a, a journalist on Twitter and then go, well, that's not what we're doing. <laughs> How is that even possible? Five days to rewrite history. Now the government is claiming, government is play, claiming that these are um, harsh, harmful, harmful hashtags. Is is how they claim this, right? Oh, it's harmful hashtags. These hashtags are very harmful. How? How are they harmful? Are they pointing out? Uh, are they pointing out the, the 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 devastation that neoliberalism actually causes to average working class people? The devastation that neoliberalism is going to cause to these farmers. Harmful hashtags. Look, if your country can be taken down by harmful hashtags, maybe you're not ready to be a government. Maybe you're not ready to be a full country. Maybe you should fucking step down and let the people take over because we're not harmed by hashtags. You know what we're harmed by? Fucking awful economic policies that are meant to fucking squash everything. And here's the, here's the real issue with this. This is where America is going to be heading. We're talking. We already talked about how uh, they're censoring leftists on YouTube now, without any kind of real claim. And a couple years ago, they already fucking talked about it. They already tried to do this. Where Facebook and Twitter, all of a sudden, eight hundred independent, bo both on the left and the right, eight hundred independent in, uh, news organizations removed from Twitter, wiped out, no questions asked. And it was a test to see if you know if 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 uh, if that would really work. And now look what's happening in India. They're actually censoring journalists and then corporate news outlets that a few days ago reported that they're censoring journalists. They're like, no, 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 no that, that's, that's not what we're doing. Just kidding. This is dangerous. This is, this is incredibly dangerous. Harmful hashtags. What if they decide that uh, that you know something like Black Lives Matter is now going to be a harmful hashtag, or defund the police is going to be a harmful hashtag, or force the vote is harmful hashtags, and they start taking down people from Twitter, blocking their accounts. They don't give you any warning for it; they just do it. What if what if America decides to do something like this? We're not that far away from it. This is neoliberalism. If you talk against neoliberalism, if you cover it on the ground, they censor you. So here's here's where here's where the uh, where the discrepancy lies. Uh, let me pull this back up. Now, uh, here we go. It says the trigger for the clampdown was the death of a protester, Navneet Singh. When the largely peaceful rallies turned violent on January 26th after a group of farmers veered from the Agrees protest route and stormed New Delhi's 17th century Red Fort, hundreds of police and farmers were injured in the clashes. Farmer, farmer, farmer leaders condemned the violence but refused to call off the protest. Authorities say no shots were fired and that Singh died because his tractor overturned. His family alleged he was fatally shot. 
uh, their account has been published by several outlets, including the caravan. Ministers of Modi government accused the journalists and a prominent opposition parliamentarian of inciting hatred and endangering the nation's integrity through inaccurate reporting and tweets. It led to the filing of colonial era sedition acts, which carry a maximum sentence of five year prison term. So there you go. I'm going to move it out of this one because it covers half of my head. <laughs> half my head becomes the article in that view. Um, so there's the discrepancy is the cops are saying, well, we never fired any shots. His tractor just overturned. Well, how did his tractor overturn? Could it have been that he was fatally shot and fell over? And then his tractor overturned because of that? There's a Simpsons episode uh, from years ago where Homer becomes a farmer because he gets into a duel with somebody or whatever, right? And then the 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 repeating gag in the episode is is how easy it is for Homer to overturn the farm the tractor and it always falls on him. Uh, that's essentially the argument that the cops are using. They're like, "Yeah, hey, it's a Simpsons episode." Do you guys do you guys do you guys see that episode? <laughs> that's what we're saying is our argument. So this this is the article from 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 the fifth that also says nine journalists have been charged in the last few weeks for covering the protests. And the article today that came out this morning says no. Again, it's like how many times is the first article you wrote going to contradict the new article you wrote? Because in the span of five days, they're like, ooh, this makes us look really shitty. Let's change the narrative and hope nobody notices. This is harmful because of the conflicting narrative. It's harmful because people aren't buying into your bullshit. They're they're not buying into the bullshit that oh these strikers they they storm the red fort, storm the red fort. Boy, they must have had some some artillery with them. Yeah, maybe some anti aircraft guns, a big tank. Perhaps. Oh no, was it was it tractors and farm equipment with signs? And people chanting, that's not a storm. January 6th was the storming of the Capitol. This is a fucking protest. And for them to claim that it's it's storming the Red Fort is the control of the narrative. And anybody that doesn't go down that fucking narrative path of, oh, well, they stormed the Red Fort. No, 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 they protested. They're protesting neoliberal e economic policies that are going to crush farming in India. It's going to privatize farming in India, which is going to be terrible for fucking everybody who, you know, likes to eat food. And nine journalists that decided to cover this have now been censored on Twitter. And they've been charged. <laughs> this is where things get even more fun. They get charged with the Sedition Act from Colonial Britain. Not only this, but but these neoliberal leaders, the 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 BJP, and I'm I'm sure even members of the Congress Party, and all of these other people, these people are mad because they tried to say, well, these protests are are violent, and the farmer the farmer leaders go, no, 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 we don't, we condemn the violence. This is retaliation. You guys are fucking us over, and you guys are sending cops after us with rubber bullets and chemical weapons, and you're and you're using live rounds. We don't want any of that. We just want to protest and get the word out and be at the negotiating table for for you know farmers' rights to to do what they need to do to make sure that they can make a living off of doing of, of feeding the entire fucking country, right? But then but the fact that they didn't they didn't cancel the protest is violence to the oligarchy. It's always been violence to the oligarchy. That's what they come in. They come in with force, right? I mean, look at every strike that's happened in the last hundred years in this country alone. They come in with force. They look at these strikers and they go, "Well, these these are going to be uh, disturbances. They're they're disturbing the public, so we need to stop them." They send the national guard and they send the military. 
They send cops. They deputize college kids. That's literally something that's happened in Seattle and Boston in 1919. It's actually happened where they deputize college students to prevent strikers. And then when, when they attack them and the strikers retaliate, they go, oh, but violence. And then they go, no, it's not violence. It's retaliation. And they go, well, you should call off the strike because now you're just being violent. And they go, no, we're not calling off the strike. And that and that notion itself, that's the violence to the oligarchy because you, you dare to stand up and challenge them. You dare to stand up and say, no, what you're doing is wrong. We deserve to be at the negotiating table. We deserve to, to uh, you know, get get what we deserve in terms of compensation we're providing labor we're putting ourselves out there we deserve to get more money for it we deserve to be a part of the negotiations of uh how we get compensated that is violence to the oligarchy and while they do that they're ignoring violence from the police right they do that here too they ignore the violence from the police. Even Joe Biden, when he was talking about what, what was going on this summer with the with the Black Lives Matter movement, with the defund the police movement. He went on television and ad after ad after ad only talked about the riots. He never talked about the peaceful protests. He never talked about the police infiltration of uh, 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 of the protests outside agitators. I was there. I was there. I was at one of the Pittsburgh protests and there were definitely agitators following us. They fucking followed us. And then I saw the cops escorting them away. He didn't mention any of that. He just kept perpetuating the fucking riot narrative. These harmful hashtags carry a five-year prison term, and these are old sedition laws from colonial times, from when the British were occupying India. I don't know if you guys remember history, but I'm trying to think here. Wasn't there, wasn't there a couple countries that had a revolution against this sort of stuff? Boy, I, I'm, I'm having a hard time remembering. What, what country was it? Was it, oh, it was India. 1940s, India fucking fought back against the British colonial rule. And you're using a colonial law. Do you know how insulting that is to use colonial oppressive laws to oppress your own fucking people? This is what neoliberalism does. This is what's happening in America. I would not be surprised if they were like, hey, there's some fucking draconian dark age laws that we can use now. Oh, if you say something mean about us, we can we'll, we'll put you in prison. You know what we're going to do? We're going to bring back the bull. Where where we put somebody in a metal bowl and then and then uh, put the metal bowl in um in like in like a fire so it heats up and you roast alive. That's what happens if you if you mean if you're mean. We'll bring the bull back. Huh? How about that? We're being progressive. <laughs> this is an insult. And this is this is literally this is literally a government showing you the lengths they will go to hide the truth. So the whole world doesn't know how bad these farmers are being treated. The journalists are being censored. That they are an authoritarian force. This can happen in the states. We are on the verge of a general strike here. We've, I mean, we've seen thousands and thousands of strikes. Teachers are striking right now. Chicago Teacher Union does not is is siding with the Democratic Party to open up schools. I covered that in last week's dispatch. And uh, the rank and file teachers have formed a safety committee. This is happening all across the country, and they're striking. If you don't think that there is a possibility that people covering these strikes are going to be censored on Twitter because the Democratic Party doesn't want bad press or harmful hashtags, and they start suspending people's Twitter accounts, throttling people's fucking, you know, YouTube and Facebook accounts. 
you haven't been paying attention to how things work in the last fucking 30 years. They're already doing it. They already fucking censored a bunch of lefties on on uh, on YouTube. People like Lee Camp can't more followers because every time he gets a new follower, they fucking unlike somebody from his page or they unsubscribe people from your page. Or if a video starts doing really well, they throttle the next four. So your channel can't gain any traction. That's what they do to me. This is the next step. If they get desperate and they're backed into the corner, we already gave Twitter that power in the States. If you don't think that what's happening with, with the farmers in India is applicable to to uh, to what's happening in America, you you haven't been paying attention. And there's a catalog of videos in my channel that you can go check out. And there's a catalog of videos on, on Lee Camp, on Jimmy Dores, on Ron Placone, on Kim Iverson's channel that all talk about this shit. Convo, you name it. So far, Twitter has said fucking nothing. And why would they? They don't care. Twitter is not a unbiased uh, platform. There is bias. Whoever's paying them, whoever, whoever wants to make sure that they have the freedoms to control fucking freedom of speech, is who they're going to listen to. They're not listening to the journalists. This is a, a, you know, we're continuing down the slippery slope of neoliberal authoritarianism. Um, and uh, and that is the form of authoritarianism I think we're, uh, uh, we're, we're walking right into with, with what's going on in America, what's going on in India, and what's going on in the UK. All of these countries have neoliberal... Uh, economics and 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 uh, parties in power and this is and this is where we're headed to so uh let's look at some comments comments coming in suzanne it's good to see you thank you for joining the uh the stream uh u.s is barreling down the same road yep I, absolutely this is this is this is neo this is the neoliberal authoritarianism that a lot of fucking people were talking about uh it's not as blatant as what you might you know, it's not as blatant as somebody coming out and being like, we got to put them in camps. You know, the right wing might head in that direction. Uh, but the but but, the uh, you know, the, the 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 liberals, the lefties are are, are they champion this, whatever they don't like. Um, yeah, the, harm, the, the harmful hashtags are a very lame excuse. Uh, and and Holly, I don't I don't know what the hashtags actually were, to be honest. And uh, I, I can't find any information. My guess right now is uh, nobody is using those hashtags because they don't want their account suspended, but they still want to be able to talk about the farmer strikes. I think the harmful hashtags were specifically about Navneet Singh's death um, and people veering away from like what the government uh, was saying, what the cops were saying happened to him. That, that, that's, um, that's my view on it. Uh, defending your right to protest after being attacked is presented as violence. Yeah, well, to really to to these people, the notion that somebody would go on strike, the notion that somebody would protest against them at all, is violence to them, uh, because they don't pitch these strikes, they don't pitch these uh, protests as as anything other than violence. They don't, you know, they talk about MLK, but they don't really understand. Um, what what he said, what he stood for, and things of that sort. Things of that sort. So, uh, da, 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 da. Holly says no criticism of Biden and the Biden family. Yeah, that's what Glenn Greenwald left the Intercept because of that. You know, and and so that's not as blatant as what's going on in India, but there are email chains between Glenn Greenwald and. You know, some higher ups at the the I, I guess the board or the team at the Intercept that basically said, "Yeah, you can talk about this. You just can't. You just can't say the shit that you're saying. Don't make the Democratic Party look bad." No, no, I think the Democratic Party looks bad because they look bad. <laughs> They're doing it to themselves. 
Christina, thanks for joining the uh, the stream here. My yoga teacher has been to India twice for classes. I've told her about the farmer strikes in India, and she doesn't believe me because she hasn't seen it on the news. Yeah, the largest l largest strike in human history, uh, not covered by the news, right? Solidarity strikes from various different, and Indian Indian news won't cover it, probably because the government won't let them. We talk about RT all the time in the states. Oh, it's it's propaganda. It's Russian propaganda. They say, oh, Russian propaganda. They say, right? But here you go. Look, this is a large, massive fucking farmer strike is happening there. Massive fucking authoritarianism is happening there. And because the government doesn't want the populace of India to know about it, they don't put it on TV. It's the same thing with with American television, CNN, MSNBC, Fox News. They're all state sponsored propaganda. They're all state-sponsored news. Raytheon uh, gets defense contracts from the United States government to make money off of both sides of every conflict. Raytheon, General Dynamics, Boeing, you name it. They all have commercials playing on fucking corporate media. <laughs> it, the, it's right there. Like it's right. You just have to kind of reach out and grab it, and the information's right there to figure all this stuff out, right? That's why media criticism and media literacy is such an important uh, uh, topic that people should be learning about in schools. Uh, she doesn't believe that Bill Gates is buying all the seeds and uh, changing them to GMs. Uh, yeah, I, I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, there, there's a story that, uh, you know, I'm, I'm looking into now about how uh, he, you know, he basically wants to make money off of it. So, uh, you know, things like AstraZeneca's vaccine, he until he until they partner with something like Pfizer, they're they're like, oh, we don't know if we can trust it. Holly, first thing Biden did uh, was deport a group of patients. He also invaded Syria, uh, put ground troops back in Syria. So, uh, y yay, Prague, no, nope. incrementalism may be kind of, but not really. She says our government won't show strikes anywhere in the world. Yeah, that's the most dangerous thing that I think the United States government has ever faced is is workers, um, you know, f go pushing back against the government. Workers pushing back against the government is the scariest thing to the United States government. Pushing back against capitalism, getting a seat at the table, and oligarchs losing power and wealth because oligarchs losing power and wealth means that they can't control co politicians anymore. They can't control the laws to benefit and gain more money off of it. So it is, it's a scary thing where they, uh, absolutely they will, they, they won't show strikes anywhere in the world. And when they do cover it, they use phrases like this, uh, where they say, uh, on January 26th, after a group of farmers veered from the agreed protest route and stormed New Delhi 17th century red fort. No, they didn't. They marched. They were protesting. That's not a storm. They didn't have guns. They weren't trying to overthrow the government with, with a fucking tourist attraction. That's how they control the narrative. And when you push back against the narrative, they have proxies like Twitter and Facebook and YouTube to censor all of these stories from getting out. Thank you so much for checking out this video. If you enjoyed this content, uh, please make sure that you hit the like button, hit the share button, and make sure you're subscribed to my channel, whether it's on Rockfin, YouTube, or Facebook. Especially Facebook and YouTube, they often uncensor pe uh, un unsubscribe people and they censor this content. So if you want to keep up to date, make sure you're subscribed. Hit that bell button so you get notifications of when I'm putting up new videos and when I am going live. I usually go live uh, on uh, Fridays and on Mondays. Uh, and if you want more information about a, a bunch of the other stuff that I do, uh, whether it's my Forkful of Noodles podcast, the Taboo Table Talk interview podcast, or the Road Reflections live streams, uh, make sure you go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. There you'll find past episodes of, uh, of various shows that I, uh, that I do, as well as information about when I'll be performing live virtual 
comedy shows, the Forkful of Noodles live virtual comedy shows. Uh, the dates and tickets will be available directly on my website. But if you're also on financial stable ground, you can help contribute to the show financially by making a one-time donation or becoming a sustaining member, which gets you free tickets and bonus content. And go to krishmohanhaha.com slash donate to, to make any kind of financial contributions. But if you can't, it's not a necessity. Most of my stuff is available for free and for everybody to enjoy. So again, go to krishmohanhaha.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A. And I hope to see you at the next video.